What's going on, Giants fans? This is Carr from NY talking to you guys about some more Giants football. Now, I'm doing a safeties and corners review. I'm going to start doing this for the next five days. Uh, I'm going to do uh, safeties and corners tonight. Um, tomorrow, I will be working on uh, linebackers and pass rushers. Or I, I most likely, you know what, I'll do like uh, outside linebackers and mid, middle linebackers tomorrow. Then the next day I will do uh, I will do uh, outside line or I'll do pass rushers and interior D linemen, which Giants probably won't be looking for a interior D lineman. But I want to discuss potential candidates that the Giants could go after if they wanted to in the later rounds. But um, let's get right to it. First off, I'm going to start off with the safeties. I had uh, one, two, uh, three, four, five safeties in. Yeah, five safeties that I really think the Giants could look at. I have some that are between the fourth and sixth round. And then I also have a couple, one guy, or actually I'd say two guys that will be in the middle rounds. And then one guy that the Giants could lean on if they trade back or if they move back into the first round to go get a safety i'm gonna talk about it so <clears throat> the first guy i have on here is xavier mckinney now the reason i have xavier mckinney higher over guys like delpit and such sorts is because uh xavier mckinney is more of a cover the freeze type of safety is what the giants need uh for i used to be a big delpit fan and a guy uh a guy mentioned it uh, Michael uh, Janikowski on uh, Facebook mentioned it. He said, Grant Tilpin's got to be one of those two safeties, same as Whitfield. I'm going to get to Whitfield later because he is on my list. Uh, but the problem I have is with Grant Delpit, he had that injury, and he he doesn't have a range enough to play the free safety. He, if you ask me, I think he'd be more of a strong safety, which we already have in Jabril Peppers, and I feel confident that Peppers can be that safety for the long run in this Giants defense. So what I'm looking at for the safety position is guys that can be that free range, roam around, free safety, that can cover uh, large spaces of the field. Now, let me talk about Xavier McKinney real quick. McKinney had 95 tackles with three interceptions, three sacks, five passes defended, and four forced fumbles in 2019. I like that. If you look at the stats, 95 tackles is a lot of tackles. For free safety, yeah, three sacks, which is really solid. Uh, five passes deflected and four forced fumbles. That's a lot of forced fumbles. Uh, he was steady and a good safety for Alabama. Uh, he displayed his versatility. He also showed ability to jack of all trades in the secondary, as he uh, is able to contribute in man coverage on tight ends and receivers who can play the deep zone at the free safety spot. So. What they're saying is this guy, he's he's great in uh, the man coverage and the and having that free roam against bigger receivers and tight ends, which I like that. That's what the Giants need. They need someone who's going to be physical. I mean, he's six foot. I'm not saying that's bad, but I think I don't mind if he's six foot and he's put. That's perfect. That's all I need right there. If he's getting the job done, he's making plays on the ball in the air. That's all I need, man. That's and that's been the trouble. I like last year for the Giants, uh, Antoine, but they did not do a good job at it. I mean, you can argue with me what you want to say about Antoine, but they the guy was absolutely terrible in coverage. He was he led the team in tackles, but his coverage was bad. It was really bad. Um, Twenty eighteen McKinney uh, was Alabama's uh, best defensive back. He totaled with seventy three tackles, ten pass breakups, two picks. One forced fumble. So this guy has been a start. He's been a starter for the last two years. He's been balling. I like uh, McKinney. There's a possibility in the first round if the Giants trade back and they get another uh, asset like a second or third round pick, the Giants could trade back into the first round to get this guy if they really wanted to. But I'm going to talk about another guy. There's two other guys that I have uh, in these top couple rounds. Uh Next guy I have is Ashton Davis from California. Uh, he's 6'1", he's 195, so he's literally, he's like, uh, he ran a 4'5", oh. 
<clears throat> Some in the media have pushed Davis as a high pick, but multiple sources call that too rich of the team. Sources call that too rich to them. They don't see a first rounder on tape, but they do think Davis might rise in the pre-draft process. So that what they're talking about is the combine stuff like that. And Davis did pretty solid. I still see him maybe slipping a bit, but I like Ashton Davis. He's got the height, and uh, some this is this is all from Walter Football. Just in case you guys are wondering, you guys can look up the same exact stuff I'm looking at. Uh, some team sources said that they graded Davis in the fourth round of 2020. They feel he is not strong or physical enough, which I think can absolutely get better. When you go into the NFL, those guys change. They know how to train you. The uh, this, this coordinator is going to do good with co coaching this guy. The strength and conditioning coach are going to do good with if they bring this guy in, making him get stronger. I, I'm not worried about that. He's gonna Guys will get stronger. When you get in the NFL, you will get stronger. Uh, he missed a lot of tackles, which is a problem, which can get fixed. Like I'm saying, new coaching staff – uh, with Joe Judge, I, I feel like they're going to make these players that they bring in better and the guys that they already have better. Um, Davis in 2018, he had 36 tackles with four picks and five pass breakups. Also competes on the track and field team. So this guy's got speed. He'll be able to roam around the field, which I like. He's projected between the second and fourth round. Uh, but there's a guy that I have next that I've said earlier that – I think if you ask me, he could be the a Pro Bowl safety in the early in his early years in the NFL. And the next guy I have on here, like I said, Antoine Winfield. Uh, he's five nine, he's short, but this guy is he's all around the field. He reminds me of Earl Thomas every time I see him. He's got speed. He ran a four four five, so he's he's got speed. He'll be a second. Maybe a first-round pick. I mean, I would not count this guy out. I still think he's going to be a top pick. I think he'll be er a late first round, early second round. So if the Gi if he's there for the Giants, I'm all for taking him, taking him or a center in that second-round spot. But Winfield was a ball hawk with the Gophers in 2019. He totaled seven picks and contributed with 85 tackles, three sacks, and a pass broken up. He showed some solid instincts with the knack of big plays, but he has some size and length limitations, which I'm not worried about. And he had a nice 40 time in the combine, which is going to help him boost his uh, chances of going into that first round. But Antoine Winfield, if you ask me, he has the chance. I think he could be the best safety. I think he is the best safety. I still think Xavier McKinney is in there, but I still am more on the uh, side of Antoine Winfield. I think he'll be the better safety if you ask me in the long run. Um, but, yeah, I think if if he's there in the second round, the Giants have to go take him. Uh, next guy I got on here is Kayvon Wallace or Kavon Wallace from Clemson. He's 5'11". Uh, he ran a 4-5-3. Uh, he's projected between the fourth and sixth round later rounds. I'm not tripping. I, this guy, the Tate, it explains it all. He's a star defender, but he provides a steady presence on the back end for Clemson. He had two picks, 63 tackles, uh, two sacks, and 10 pass breakups in 2019. In 2018, he had 52 stops with the interception and three passes defended. Wallace has some size limitations for the NFL, which again showed at the Senior Bowl. But Wallace looks like a backup or a special teams competitor. I still think this guy has a chance. If he gets in the right system, he can do the uh, he could do very good things. I mean, it all depends on being in the right system with the right coaching, and I think the Giants have that. Uh, and we're gonna see. I mean, I like uh, Jerome Henderson. Uh, I think he'll do a solid job if he does co come here to coach this guy. Uh, but if you look at the tape, this guy is a pretty solid uh, safety. I would not mind the Giants taking him with it's like the fifth round, something like that, if he's there. Uh, he's a name to look out for. Kayvon Wallace from Clemson. He's 5'11". So be aware that he might be there for the Giants. Um, 
Next guy I like on here is Geno Stone. A couple people I've seen have talked about this guy as a uh, underrated talent. He's 5'10". His 40 time kind of questioned me. He had earned a full 5'9". That's not bad, but I'd like to see a little faster because I like my guys to at least be able to range and roam with some speed. Uh, Stone was a solid defender for Iowa in 2019. He had 70 tackles with three uh, forced fumbles and an interception and four passes defended. Uh, he's a strong for his size, but he has some length and height limitations uh, for the NFL. As a sophomore, he had 39 tackles with four picks and three passes broken up. So look out for this guy. It'll probably be, I'd say, fifth or sixth round where you see him. Uh, but, I mean, if you watch his tape, this guy, he's I like him. He goes after the ball. He's aggressive in the air. Um, I would really like to see him be in a Giants uniform. So watch that name out, Geno Stone. Uh, he'll be there, man. If uh, if it's fourth, fifth, or sixth round, he'll be there. He's a sleeper. I like to see if the Giants can grab him. Uh, but that should do it for the safeties. I'm now going to talk about the cornerbacks. I had uh, one, two, uh, three four, five, six cornerbacks. Uh, some of them are nickel, or I'd say majority of them are nickel. Uh, there's one or two guys that I have playing outside. Obviously, the number one guy I have on here is Jeff Okuda. I mean, if you ask me, I think Jeff Okuda is the second best prospect in this draft behind uh, Chase Young. He's a very, very, very intelligent player. Uh, Okuda was phenomenal in pass coverage uh, to the run, the route, and the prevent separation. He has a rare combination of size, speed, and athleticism. He had 35 tackles. This is um, in 2019. He had 35 tackles with nine passes broken up in three picks. This guy, he does, and he doesn't. One thing he, I can't say about him, he doesn't. I don't think he had any pass interference penalties last season. Like he mentioned in his press conference, uh, this guy, he's a very smart cornerback. And this is something that the Giants really, uh, I mean, I, I would like, I mean, I'm not saying they're going to pick him. But, I mean, I, I would not be surprised if the Giants picked him, I guess. But, I mean, this guy's one of the top, he's he's going to be a pro bowler someday, I'm telling you that. He, I mean, if I'd say if the Giants did give James Bradbury and the, the Giants would be looking at him uh, in the first round. Uh, he's downfield. Okuda is a tough defender who uses his length to cover up receivers, has a speed to run with them, and possesses a burst uh, for recoverability. He could jam receivers, yet has the ability to turn and run with them. Talking about that hip movement. Uh, over the past couple of seasons, Okuda did a very good job of slapping passes away. And as a junior in 2019, he showed improvement by producing some picks. So Okuda is a guy to watch out for, guys. Uh, don't be surprised uh, if the Giants uh, go after him. Oh, another uh, someone uh, named Mark, he had here Jalen Johnson, quarterback from Utah. That's another guy to look out for. I, did, I didn't have him on here, but I have read – I actually was watching his film – a couple hours ago, I like that dude, Jalen Johnson. He is a sleeper, man. And actually, let me uh, pull up some of the stuff about Jalen Johnson real quick because I did look at his film and it really impressed me. Uh, but I, I haven't seen which round he's going to be in, but um, let me check for you guys really quickly where I had him at. But, uh, I mean, I had a lot of guys on this list. I have guys in the fifth, sixth round that the Giants could be looking at. Uh, guys in the fourth round. I tried to range it by uh, Browns where where we could find these guys at. Uh, but Jalen John, yeah, Jalen Johnson from uh, Utah, uh, six foot. He ran a four five. I'm not tripping about that. That's solid. He's going. He's projected second and third round. Solid cornerback who has instincts and some ball skills. But the team sources know he's very thin and skinny, which I'm not. I'm not ashamed of because when, like I said, when you get to the NFL, you're gonna get bigger. Uh, Thirty-six tackles, eleven pass breakups. That's impressive. Uh, two picks. 
He put together an impressive game against Washington. If you watch that Washington tape, please look up Jalen Johnson's highlights against Washington. That's the exact tape I was watching earlier today. That guy, he did a really, really good job. I'm not kidding. In 2018, he had four picks, four pass breakups, and 41 tackles. Uh, he totaled 25 pass or tackles with the interception and six passes broken up as a freshman. So he has been playing um, every every year he's been there. I mean, he's a true freshman. This guy's a beast, man. He's a guy to watch out for. I'm glad that you mentioned that, Mark. Great guy to look at as well. Great, great, great guy. I like that. Um, Next guy I had on my list, I already talked about Jeff Okuda. We now got Jalen Johnson. Next guy is Christian Fulton. Christian Fulton, I'm looking at him being in that slot nickel area. Um, he he's a he's a fast corner at four four six speed man six foot one ninety seven. That's fine. I like that. It's not bad at all. Uh, Fulton does a good job on the run with receivers and preventer separation, but he needs to improve on his discipline. Uh, he could stand to do a better job defending the ball on 50-50 plays, which he can improve on, especially with uh, James Bradbury being there. His te his Texas tape, watch that tape too on Christian Fulton. Um, and the one in the national championships against Clemson looked more like something out of a second day uh, second day uh, second day pick. Yeah. The Texas game, I watched the game because I, I actually live in Texas. I watched some of the Texas games. He did not do a good job in that game. I'm not going to lie. He didn't do He was getting beat. But it, if you look, I mean, the guy has potential. Put him in the nickel. Put him in the slot. Give him the opportunity. I think he, if he gets in the right system, he's going to do a great job. Um uh, Hailing for one of the defensive, one of the best uh, defensive back school, he was impressive in coverage in 2018. Uh, despite not putting together a big stat line, he had 17 tackles, one force fumble, one pick, seven pass breakups. So, like I said, more like a nickel guy. I still think he's a sleeper. He's got speed. He reminds me a little of, of Trey Waynes. I think he'd be better than Trey Waynes, but. I like this guy. I think he's a sleeper, even though he's ranked pretty high. I still think he's one of the high sleepers. But uh, he's a guy to look out for. He was one of the top recruits in the nation at one point. But uh, look out for this guy. I, I, I don't know why people are doubting him. I still think he's a first-round talent. But, we'll, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. You know, it's just... It's just critics, man. You sometimes you just can't take it too serious. People like the same thing with Tristan Werfs. Everyone says he's going to be a guard. I still think he's going to be a tackle. I mean, the guy he proves that he can be a tackle. Uh, next guy I have on here is Troy Pride Jr. from Notre Dame. This guy is fast. He ran a four four flat. Uh, Pride had forty tackles, six passes broken up, and picked <gasps> in twenty nineteen. He was solid, but not overly impressive as a senior. He helped himself with the good combine uh, with the 40-yard dash. Now, I like I still like this guy because if he falls, the Giants can take him. It'd probably be third, fourth round I'm looking at. Uh, but he'd be more of the nickel guy. I still think the weakest part of the Giants' defense right now is still that nickel position. They need them a slot cornerback. I still think slot cornerbacks are one of the most important things in this defense. Because it, it depends. You got they gotta read they gotta read like the outside receiver, what he's doing. If he's running a stop, a five yard stop, ten yard stop, you he can pick that off. If it's a smart cornerback, he knows what he's doing. I gotta know if he can cover these slot receivers. Slot receivers are becoming a more important part of the game now. Uh especially I mean, like for the Patriots, look what Julian Edelman did for the Patriots. You got guys like McCole Hardman now. Even for the Giants, you got Sheb, Golden Tate. You got all these guys in the NFL in the slot position that are becoming more valuable now. That's why guys like, for example, Isaiah Simmons and uh, these other cornerbacks I've talked about, like Fulton and same as Troy, uh, Troy Pride Jr., Got it. That nickel position is very important, I, I believe, especially coming into this uh, 
upcoming uh, couple years in the NFL. It's becoming more important. But Pry was a good part. In, in 2018, he combined, he combined with Julian Love. Remember, Julian Love, Notre Dame. Uh, and combined with Julian Love to provide the firing Irish with a good coverage perimeter. Uh, he had 10 passes broken up, two picks, and one forced fumble of 37 tackles. He also has some size in him uh, and serious speed. Reportedly clocking in in the four threes in the 40-yard dash with the strong senior year. Pride could be a riser. Like I said, the media wants to bash him, but then they want to hype him up at the end. Like, this guy, I you look at the tape, Troy Pride Jr., he's got significant speed, man. And if I feel like if you had him and Julian Love, that would be nice. I mean, it depends on what the Giants are going to do, though, on the defensive side. They may stick with Julian Love at the free safety spot and say, hey, he's going to be our free safety for the next 10 years. We're keeping him there. Or they might say, hey, we might like someone better at the safety position, like an Antoine Winfield, put him in there, and maybe they keep Julian Love at that nickel cornerback. But we're gonna have to see. But Troy McBride, a lot I'm high on him. Check him out. If you guys haven't, go look at his tape. He had he had a couple games that you can look at, but I like him. Next guy I have on here is Legarius Sneed from Louisiana Tech. He's six foot, he ran a four three seven. He's got speed. He had his stats are actually pretty impressive. He had 73 tackles, six passes break broken up. Three picks in 2019. And he also had a good combine, too. This guy has been rising up the boards, very quietly rising up the boards. Uh, he had, in 2018, he did not, uh, in the 2018 season for the Bulldogs, and did not go unnoticed by the numerous scouts coming to watch Jalen Ferguson at the time. On the year, he recorded 44 tackles, three picks, and eight passes defended. He has good size to him, but his coverage skills could use some work for the NFL. Some teams advise him, project him on the back half of the 2020 draft or undrafted team ranks. I totally disagree. This guy, he's a late round pick. I'd say he's in between fifth and sixth round, but he's going to he's gonna rise up. I would not be surprised if a team drafted him in the late fourth round. I like this guy, uh, speed. Put him in the slot. I like guys with speed. I mean, you have to have speed, especially with these guys now, like the Tyree Kills, the McCall Hardmans, guys like that. You have to have to keep up with them. That's what I feel like in the Super Bowl. The 49ers, they lacked against the speed and athleticism of those receivers that the Chiefs had. Like I said, Tyree Kill, McCall Hardman, Sandy Watkins. These guys have all speed. They're all track runners, man. You got to be able to hang with these guys. That's just how it is. Even for Baltimore, you got Marquise Brown, you got Lamar Jackson running. You got even just got quarterbacks that are dual threat now. You got to have speed. It's like that's why I like Isaiah Simmons too. Uh, even if they go at four, because he's got speed and he's got the athleticism. So that's what I'm saying. The next guy I have on here, this is a sleeper, like a really, really, really deep sleeper. Uh, he's saying Bassey from Wake Forest. Uh, he's ranked in the fourth to sixth round. He ran a 4 4 6 over the past three seasons. So, three year starter, I'm pretty sure. Bassey was a steady defender for Wake Forest, and that earned him a spot at the Senior Bowl. He really struggled in Mobile. I still, I still think this guy will improve. Like I said, right system, right uh, right coaches. I think Joe Judge has hired the right staff for this upcoming team. Uh, Bassey total for 60 tackles with a pick and 11 passes defended in 2019. During the previous two seasons, he had 74 to, and 75 tackles. That's really good. So he, one thing I can say about him, he's a great tackler. Um, Bassey had three... Interceptions and 16, break, 16 pass breakups as a sophomore with uh, 15 pass breakups and one pick as a junior. So he's good at getting that ball out of the receiver's hands, and I like that. For an NFL, he would best fit at the slot cornerback. Like I said, put him in there if you want to keep Julian Love at free safety. I like this guy. I think this guy has very high potential. Uh 
But it all depends on what do the Giants want to do. What do they want to do? Do they want to stick with uh, Love? And I like Love. I've been the biggest Julian Love fan, if you ask me. Julian Love, I feel like he could fit in that free safety spot. But there's some that may be not agreeing with me in the organization or others. It's just how it is. You know, some people don't always agree on that same thing. Uh, next guy I have on here is Levante Taylor. Levante Taylor, he was actually coming out of high school. He was like the number one ranked, I think, corner of safety. Uh, I think it was safety. They moved him to corner, I believe. Yeah, they moved him to corner at Florida State. He's 5'9", 4'4", 5'. He got himself uh, – let me – actually, let me talk about uh, – his stats real quick. Uh, Taylor had 37 tackles with a pick and three passes broken up. In 2019, he looks like a backup slot cornerback in the NFL. This guy, he had uh, some issues at the college. Um, but I'm not going to say he's a backup. I still think he can work his way up, which that's why I've always been a very, very high on preseason games. Like, a lot of people say, well, we need to get rid of preseason game. Preseason game is how you make your debut in the NFL, how you make a name for yourself. Like, example, Victor Cruz. If Victor Cruz did not have any of those preseason games, we would not be talking about him. as not. We might not have been got to the Super Bowl in 2011 season when we went. You got to think about That's the stuff you have to think about. Because Victor Cruz was a big – like, he's one of the guys that really made himself – a name in that preseason. That's just how it's got to be. Daniel Jones this year did a solid job in the preseason. And that's why I have Levante Taylor in the Giants talks. He'd probably be a free agent guy or he's going to be a seventh round pick. So we'll have to see. Uh, in the in the inter, Entering the 2018 season, there were some sources who liked Taylor's potential to be a nickel cornerback, which is what I have him ranked right now. And same as Walter Football has him ranked. Uh, he was coming off a 2017 season in which he told 18 tackles, three passes broken up, and two picks. However, in 2018 season was underwhelming. He had 19 tackles, three pass breakups, one pick while not staying out in coverage. Evaluators feel free in the NFL that he'd be a nickel back. Uh, Taylor needs to get stronger, which he'll definitely get stronger. So uh, that's a name to look out for. Uh, but uh, you guys stay tuned. That's going to do it all for this video. If you guys haven't, please subscribe. Uh, I, I'd really appreciate it. Also, comment down below anything else you'd like me to talk about. Any questions that you have. You can also follow my Twitter at S, capital S, underscore C, uh, which is capital as well, 1313. You guys can also follow the podcast. I will have a podcast out tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to be pretty busy. I'm going to have a podcast and I'm going to have a, another video out as well talking about the uh, middle and the uh, outside linebackers that I like. I'll um, be talking about that. But you guys stay tuned. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. And also, uh, also uh, if you have any other thing, any comments... Any other players that you'd like me to talk about, please let me know. I'm going to have – this is uh, – I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to have like five or six more videos out before this draft because I, ha I still have a mod draft I got to do as well. Another – a couple more podcasts. But you guys stay tuned. I hope you guys stay safe and healthy. Praying for all you guys. And uh, hope your families are doing all right as well. And go Giants.